So here's a 2D image and here's a 3D conversion I made using something called a depth map. And what a depth map is, is it gives us the depth of an image or a video. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you a free and a paid way, two different methods to get this effect. You can do it on photos, you can do it on video, and let's get into it. First of all, a paid way is using a DaVinci Resolve. I'm using the new version. If you don't have version 18, it's not going to work. And uh, I have a douchey photo of myself that I thought, yes, this is what we're going to turn into a 3D photo. And by the way, the uh, workflow we're going to use, same for both of these. So take your image, import it in, take that imported image and import it again into the timeline. And we need to do two things. First of all, we need to generate a depth map out of this. And second of all, uh, we need to displace it using that depth map. So using this node, shift uh, spacebar to add a node, and I'm gonna add a depth map node. This is something that is new uh, to version 18. It's using some AI nonsense. Um, you can see already um, immediately off the bat, we get a depth map where white means closer to the foreground. In other words, me and black is the background. We can invert it. Uh, we can also control the uh, kind of the normalization of this. So here I've actually isolated myself and all this, um, and you could do a bunch of stuff with that. Uh, now that we have a depth map and we will play with it a bit later, how do we get the 3D effect? Well, uh, there's a couple ways to do this. I'm just gonna use the easiest way, and that is using a displace node. So we're gonna take our image, we are going to displace it. And again, everything we're doing here is gonna be available in 3D software. And then we are going to plug in our depth map. So in other words, we're taking our image, we're displacing it using this depth map. And you can see if I start playing with this after increasing the offset, you can see when I start playing with this, whoa, it kind of looks 3D, but it also looks kind of stupid. <laughs> like you can see there's a harsh line uh, over here. So we'll fix that. But um, what, what we're doing here is we're offsetting, we're displacing by a certain amount and you can change the refraction strength, make this kind of insane. Um, we're doing that and then we can change kind of the uh, center of it. Uh, to get rid of this harsh edge, all we have to do is uh, edit our depth map. Uh, so I'm going to add a bit of post processing, a bit of post filter to add some detail back in. So you can see before, after, it's actually capturing some of the depth in the hair. Uh, the main thing to clean up this boundary though is adding a bit of blur. And you could even be generous with this. Um, the more blur we add, kind of the less intense the edges are going to be. And this is always going to be a bit of a weird um, effect. It's never going to be perfect, but you can see how we're getting depth uh, very easily out of this. Again, the amount that you have is dependent on the offset. And the cool thing about doing this with DaVinci, by the way, is uh, this depth map node works with video, I believe, and it's continuous and all this. Either way, that's how you do a 3D image, uh, the paid way. Um, although it might be available for free. Either way, uh, now let's talk about the freeway and what you are going to do is generate a depth map online since we don't have DaVinci. To do that, just type in image to depth map, go to this 3dphoto.io and uh, you just upload a, or not, you choose file and then you upload an image. So I'm gonna use the same picture. I'm gonna upload it. It's gonna generate a depth map and we're gonna do this displace node stuff in a blender, which is free. Um, so same idea, just not in DaVinci. Okay, waiting a few seconds. There we go. Here's our depth map. You can see it kind of looks a bit weird. We have a, instead of a luminance thing where it's black and white, we have this kind of hue based thing. Uh, we're going to convert it into a luminance and use it the same. So uh, right click, save your image as a depth map and uh, let's open up Blender or any compositor you have that has a, a displace node. Uh, to do this, we're just gonna go to the compositor. We don't need anything from the 3D viewport, don't need the render layers, and we're gonna use not a bokeh image, uh, but we're gonna use two images. The first one is of course going to be, again, it's the same setup, is gonna be this. The second one is going to be the depth map. So we have our original image, which looks kind of washed out, so let me set it to standard. Uh, we have our image, and we have our depth map. For our depth map, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an RGB to black and white node. Now, is this technically the correct way to do it? I don't know, but it seems to work for me. RGB to black and white, and if you want to normalize it so that the furthest depth is black and the closest is uh, white, uh, you can use a normalize node. Um, 
it may or may not make a difference because the depth map may already be normalized. But you can see there's a subtle kind of change there. Now, you may not want to use normalize, but that's up to you. Either way, take your image. Again, exact same thing. We're using a displace node. How are we displacing it? Using our depth map that we generated. So let's view that. So here's before and after. It's super subtle. It's just shifted by pixel or so. What I want to do is I want to make this effect way stronger. So I'm going to take our depth map and I'm going to multiply it by a big number. So I'm saying make it 30 times as strong. And already you can see something happened. The way this works is you can think of this as our strength. So if we crank this up, you're going to start seeing some crazy distortion. That's our strength. This is also me in the morning. Um, this is our strength, and this is going to be our direction, this vector. So when we go on the X, so now we have our normal image. As we progress on the X, we're doing shifting on the X axis. And you can see, you can actually type in a value bigger than one. Uh, you can see how we're getting our distortion in either direction, and it actually looks pretty realistic. And you can also do this in the Y direction. Now, I have no idea what Z does. It seems to do nothing, which makes sense. It's a 2D image. But uh, this is how we make our thing 3D. The only limitation of this one, instead of DaVinci, is you can't do it with video. So there we go. Just wanted to uh, clear the air about that.